War Tales. Is it worth a buy? Let's read the words of the words of the developer. War Tales is an open world RPG in which you lead a group of mercenaries in their search for wealth across a massive medieval universe. Explore the world, recruit companions, collect bounties and unravel the secrets of the Tomb of the Ancients. I'd only penciled in um, a day to play this before review but I've done two days and um, I was foolish in the two days that I played it because I could have progressed way further than I have but I just was so loving the game that I wanted to just explore everywhere in the opening zone that I started in instead of just moving on when I knew I was pretty much strong enough to do so. Um, I've got a band of mercenaries who are just absolute bastards and I love it. Please have mercy good sirs. We didn't attack you to hurt you. Believe me. We only wanted to scare you so that you would hand over your crowns. Please don't hurt me. It was wrong and we knew it. But Gossenberg requires so much gold to cross the border that we had no other choice. We have no other choice but to rob travellers. It's the kind of game, guys, that's just a, a real slow burner. This is going to take up weeks of your time. Weeks and weeks and weeks of it. And you can customise the game to anything you like as well, so you can save as often as you want. There's a nine-man mode if you want to be absolutely brutal. You can just change the way the combat is, whether it's difficult or easy, compared to surviving in the open world with having to rest and eat and drink and survive. It's also got co-op, but uh, I didn't get a chance to try that out, but um, I bet that's great. But before I get into all of that, guys, a quick look at the graphicals. There's a few things to twiddle and tweak, not a lot. And I have to say, guys, that it, in the open world, it does run rather poorly. Um, I'm getting frame drops now and then. Well, quite often, actually, in the open world. Uh, the turn-based side, as you would expect, has pretty much no frame drops at all because it's, it's more or less a static camera. Um, and also, you can't really zoom out much from the in the open world, which is a bit of a... A shame really because um, I keep getting lost because of the orientation of everything it's it's a bit but anyway what do you do in this well you have this group of mercenaries you start off with just a couple and uh, you have to earn your crust it's a bit like warband it's a bit like warband but not in first person that's the best way I can describe it there's a living breathing world out there with villages and farmsteads and traders on the road bandits animals it's just an alive world and it's brutal it's a brutal world guys and it will easily consume your bottom if you're not careful in what you're doing the object is to put together a group of mercenaries and there's lots of different classes in this too many to even mention because there's subclasses within the classes as well but you've got your tanks you've got your rogues you've got your archers you've got your swordsmen your, your defenders you've got people throwing pyrotechnics, people throwing poison around the place. It's all hell breaks loose later on, on on the actual battlefield. I'm just starting to come into the point where it gets pretty hard. Um, and it's great. It's just getting better and better, this game. I've got quite a big party going on at the minute. Um, I've got quite a, a good mix of people. Um, I've got a, a, an even a wild boar which called Pigface who sadly died. And we had a funeral for him as well. And um, when, when one of your, your um, colleagues dies, you can bury him anywhere you want and have a little service. So we had a service for Pigface. And it's them kind of little touches that make this game good. It is so immersive. Uh, there's so much to do. I, I honestly, after about uh, probably, I don't know, seven hours, I wanted to start again, but I'd, I'd done too much to, to I just, there's no real tutorial or instructions to this, which is hugely horrible. And I didn't realise that everything levels up. Your skills level up, your professions level up, everything levels up. And there's screens for each thing that you level up. And you can then add perks to the perks on top of the perks. It's just a massive deep game where you have to really check everything out. And I hadn't done that properly. And I was sticking all my perks in knowledge instead of spreading them out through my professions. Uh, which was a bit of a shame so i ended up unlocking f all as a blacksmith even though i'd been blacksmithing for about 17 years and after about seven hours i started a mad crafting spree getting everybody equipped with better armor better weapons uh, and things like that so yeah i should have checked a bit more thoroughly but i was just so absorbed in the actual world the characters the game the missions the bounties it was just great so as you build your group up and you learn your professions and you've got a good balance of what you want in there you go around the map discovering 
lots and lots of things. There's banded encampments, there's bears, there's wolves, there's rat-infested places, there's elite guys just wandering around with huge weapons that will just hand your ass to whoever wants it on a plate. There's dungeons even where you go into a dungeon, you have to have a lot of torches to travel around and there's little puzzles in there and some nice rewards. The open world map is put together through different zones and you pay a toll to get through, so it's a once only payment to actually access that area and as you go in obviously each area is more powerful than the last one if you selected that i did at the beginning of the game you get to choose whether each zone is a set leveled zone or whether you want everything to kind of level up with you and give you a challenge wherever you are i kind of like the other option of just having set zones because i do like going into the wrong place and uh, shitting myself when everything's like 25 levels above us so i wanted that experience but if you don't you can have it the other way on the world map you travel around in real time by simply clicking around the map but time passes quite quickly and you get tired quite quickly and you'll need to set up a camp there's lots of different things you can build in your camp to make your stay wherever that may be a bit of a joy joy place you see the combat system uses these i don't know what they're called they're these like um they're these kind of um attack points if you like to do special moves every special move needs one of these points to do now you'll waste them all quickly in a fight easily go through them um, but when you rest you can get them back if you have the right buildings and you assign people to the right buildings that you've built such as tents strategy tables campfires and things like that you'll get a load of stuff that you can build and you can get points back by resting all you need to make sure is that you have enough food when you do a rest and that you pay the wages if the wages are due that day in the actual combat um, well you place your troops wherever you want uh, sometimes you can see the enemy sometimes you can't depending on where you're actually having a fight uh, most of the time you can see exactly where the enemy are and what kind of enemy they are as well so you've got to place your troops very very carefully have the people that can take damage uh, near the front uh, protect your rogues because they can do massive burst damage but they can't really take much so it's all about strategically placing everybody then when you decide that you're happy you always seem to go first and uh, so you send you can see the, the, the actual order at the bottom left of the screen uh, but I found a good strategy is to throw me Rogan first with uh, some nice poisons and poison as many of the bastards as I can. Once the first move's done, then all hell breaks loose. It's just one after the other. People moving around, stabbing people, slashing people, poleaxing them, burning them, setting fire to the grass around you charging in it's just absolute chaos you've got to watch that you don't lose any troops you can bandage people on the battlefield if they're out of combat um, but it's about planning and planning and planning looking at what your skills are and using them you, you can get confused as to who's got what skills and you can make a lot of bad decisions and make mistakes i've made tons and tons of bad mistakes on the battlefield you probably see a few of them in this video to be honest with you i make that many but i've managed to keep going through i've only lost pig face uh, so i have uh, managed it and that's on normal difficulty on the actual combat when you win a battle you loot everything you'll get uh, experience you'll level up when you level up you can use uh, higher gear stuff you can craft that with your blacksmith uh, you've also got alchemy who can uh, craft medicine to heal people uh, and you can also thieve. I love the thief thievery in this. One of the professions is a bloody thief. And uh, he can go around, or she, stealing as much shit as you want. But if everything has a value of um, a thievery. So, for example, you might uh, go to steal something and it might say, if you steal this, you will um, get a negative score of between, I don't know, 50 and 70. Now, if you get over 100... Um, that means you're wanted and people will come actively looking for you and if they see you, they'll attack you. So you have to be careful to try and keep that under 100 unless you fancy your chances against the King's Guard, so to speak, uh, who will be just doing the patrol routes around the place. There's escort missions as well, um, where people will be after you as well. So there's a lot of uh, things that to, to watch out for on the actual world map. You can put perks in so you can run faster. There's just so much content in this, guys. I can't even go into it all. There's just that much uh, to do in this. There's a lot of kind of pre-planning. There's a lot of things to look at. Uh, it's not a complicated game at all. It's very straightforward once you remember to do everything and you know where to look to do everything you've got to put your points in things as you achieve things there's tons of achievements i'm not talking about the stupid steam achievements that are just ugh, why would anyone care about them 
I'm on about the actual game in- achievements because the achievements in the game unlock things. So it's very important you pay attention attention to all of that uh, because that's how you get more powerful. There's a load of fun here, guys. Absolutely weeks and weeks of fun. For I think it's £22 at the minute. Its proper price is about 30 um, It's just a lovely little indie RPG game. Highly, highly recommended. Uh, it has got a couple of things wrong, wrong which you'll see. Uh, in my scoring at the end, the main thing being the actual um, running in in the in the real time. It's a bit it's a bit it's a bit there. Uh, it's a bit frame droppy, guys. But uh, overall, definitely worth a buy.